Welcome to Singapore Food Festival. It's the first virtual edition. It's me, Aiken, hanging out with you today. And uh, today's going to be very exciting because we are going to be having my favourite craft beer as well as some snacks. So we want to welcome you, everybody who's been watching on uh, Webex. Special shout out to you and uh, people who are on Facebook and Twitch. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. Are you ready to day drink, ladies and gentlemen? It's on about 5.30, but I am so here for it. Um, and of course, today we've got a very special selection of craft beer, a very special local selection of snacks as well. And it's going to be really quite the gastronomical adventure, all right? So um, if you are joining in, come on, give us a comment, say uh, hello, tell us if you've got your uh, your food bundle kit, if you've got all your beers lined up, we're going to uh, give you some time before we start cracking them open. So make sure your beers are chilled. A bit late for that, but I'm sure you've already done that, right? You know, you, you as a beer drinker, a beer connoisseur would have gotten your beers all chilled and nice and cold. And we're going to eat and drink together. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto the show, onto the set from Brewwork Singapore, Mitch and Joeen. Hello guys! Hello! All right, Hi, everyone. Welcome. This is like the, the Aiken show today, huh? <laughs> with Singapore Food Festival, of course. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, you guys are from Brewworks. Can you tell us a bit about Brewworks as well as maybe what you guys do there? Okay, so my name is Joeen, I'm marketing manager from Brewworks. Uh, big background about Brewworks. Brewworks started in 1997 mm -hmm. at a... Basically, it's a small brew pub at... Ref, sorry, at... Riverside Point, Clark Key. Yep, yep, yep. It was 997. Yep. Today, we're actually the longest running craft brewery experience in Singapore. Wow. We have three restaurants in Singapore and one microbrewery at Kampong Ampat. Mm. And can I just uh, interject there and tell you that Brewworks has really good food as well. So I've been there uh, and last year we had the kombu truffle fries. Oh, so good. Really divine. <laughs> Alright, Mitch. Alright, yes. Uh, apparently, I'm Mitch. I'm the head brewer of Brewworks. So, uh, Currently, Brewworks is a production brewery mm -hmm. and uh, three restaurants. So um, I manage a production brewery. Yep. It's a uh, 8,000 square feet production wow. site wow. Uh, with top of the line canning equipment yep. and uh, top notch centrifuge, uh -huh. uh, which allows us to produce quite stable and uh, um, shelf stable and uh, clear beers. Yeah, that's, yeah. wait, so let me get this straight. Your job is to basically come up with new brews Absolutely. That's and wonderful. we're going to be trying some of your creations today, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes. Ah, that's great. Okay, so um, we're going to get into the beers in just a minute, but um, maybe Joanne, you can give us a sneak peek into the snacks we're going to be having today. Okay, so this is the snack platter that we have today. Mm -hmm. We have actually uh, went to curate six uh, local favourites. Yep. This represents the four ethnicities of Singapore. There is Chinese, Malay, Indian and Eurasian. Oh, okay. okay. So if you look close up, yeah. what I have here is prawn roll. Yeah. So prawn roll is actually sourced from a local home baker. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she's got lots of order during Chinese year. We asked her for help to bake That's this great. for us. Yeah. Uh, next is mini pineapple tarts. This were actually bought from really old school mama shop. Mama shops, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, and then next is uh, Morocco. Oh, yes. So Morocco is a must have during Nipah Valley. Mm -hmm. They are actually, uh, this batch is from Kajarina Curry. Mm, okay. Behind, right in front here is Papadam. Yes. Uh, this is from Botus Curry. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, it, and right now it's in, it used to be from India. Yeah. But today, I think in most Indian uh, Muslim restaurants, mm -hmm. they definitely will serve Papadam. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then at the corner here is Rampenye. Rampenye. It's actually a kacang. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. So peanuts basically. Got it. Yeah, so this is a high raya must have. Yeah. And what I have here, which is um, actually Brewworks spent grain breadsticks. Oh, yum. Okay. Yeah, so if you look up close, you can see tiny little black um, dots you see okay. inside there. You, you hold up a bit, can then we show everybody who's watching. Yes, check it out. So basically, you can see tiny little black yeah. dots. What are the black dots? So the black oh, dots. That's the spent range that we used to Oh, make wow. Yeah. Okay, okay. Wow, so everything that you guys develop is sort of um, beer related. That's awesome. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to be uh, going into our taste, our beer tasting first. Is that right? 
Oh, oh we're going to introduce, introduce the beers first. Yeah, I think yeah. we we'll briefly introduce the beers. Okay. Then uh, to be on the same page, we'll share some knowledge, what beer is, what yeah. craft beer is, what is it made out of, uh, Got and it. so on. Yeah. Okay, please, master, teach us today. Yeah, because a lot of times, you know, we just uh, crack open the can. We don't really know what goes into brewing a beer, right? Okay. So please uh, help us to get a deeper appreciation for it. All right, guys, so beer, yeah. any, any, any sort of beer. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's brewed of four basic ingredients. Okay. Uh, brewing water, mm -hmm. uh, malted barley, mm -hmm. hops and yeast. Okay. Uh, some other ingredients can be implemented as well, like fruits, you know, different kinds of sugars. Uh, some people even use uh, spent bread, you know, ah. whatever. Like. Okay, so that, that little thing there is the yeast, I'm guessing. We'll get there, yeah. yeah. So let's start with the brewing water. Okay, start with so the brewing water. So brewing water. Uh, comprises 90 to 95 percent of volume okay. of beer, yeah. right? So uh, it's of utterly importance to have uh, nicely treated water. Mm. So it, it, it should have a very, very good flavor. Okay. Um, Singapore water is very soft, yeah. meaning the mineral content yeah. is very low. Okay. So certain beers uh, favor certain uh, mineral content. Uh. So Singapore water by itself yeah. is very good. Okay. Um, Perfectly suits very light colored beers. Right. Uh -huh. If we're talking about darker beers or you know very hoppy beers, mm -hmm. we need to spoil it. Oh, spoil the water. Spoil the water. I see. Wow. Yeah. I think. I mean, you're right. The beer is like you say, ninety percent uh, water, right? Right. So the water itself is actually so, such a vital ingredient in the beer. Absolutely. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah. Next ingredient. Okay. The next ingredient is barley malt. Mm -hmm. Uh, barley malt. Barley malt. Barley malt. Look at that. Um, malt means it was germinated in a special way. Okay. Barley by itself, if say if we go into the fields and harvest it, yeah, we can hardly use it for brewing. Oh. We need to germinate it. Yeah. And dry it. Right. So it will overgo certain chemical reactions inside the kernel, mm. so we could mill it easier, mm -hmm. and then certain enzymes will uh, will be produced. Got it. And then, after that, we can uh, actually use it for brewing. Mm. As you can see, uh, here we present uh, a light mold yeah. and very dark mold, yeah. right? just as a contrast. But basically, it's maybe like one-tenth of the whole gamut of uh, flavors, gotcha. mold flavors that Brewworks uses. Right, okay. And so you would use a different uh, type, a different roast, I imagine, for a different, different color. color beer. Correct. Right. Ah, so it. it will let us to produce almost beer of any color, sure. you know, like from lightest yeah. till like blackest stout, you know, got it. and so on. Okay. Uh, other cereals can also be malted, mm -hmm. but it's not very common. Mm. Traditionally, it's barley malt. Got it. The next ingredient is wow, hops. This one looks like long beans. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it smells so good. These no, are hops. Process. This is processed flowers right. of, of a certain plant. Yeah, so the hop flowers are um, like quite Yeah, they're big, a bit right? fluffy. Check it out. Wow. So these are processed already it's so that it's processed. sort of the... Pelletized. The, yeah, got it. So it, it allows to extend the shelf life dramatically. Like flowers probably you could, you could store for like yeah. six months or so. This is three years. So this is where you get your bitterness and that uh, flowery aroma. And aroma. Ah, gotcha. So, yeah. You already introduced. So, yes, hops uh, um, contribute to bitterness, okay. to flavor, yeah. and to aroma. Ah. And certain hop varieties, they can, uh, they can contribute crazy hop aromas, like uh, mango, right. passion fruit, oh, wow. tobacco, wow. even coffee, vanilla, and so on. Uh, we'll oh, taste it later right. on. So yeah, this is, so. it's all about sort of adding the right amount to that brew right. to get what you want, your exactly. desired outcome. I want to make the hops into like a home diffuser so that my room can smell like that. It smells <laughs> so good, yeah. Right. All right, okay. And the last one? This is the yeast. This is the yeast. Yeah. Uh, so this is a live microorganism, yeah. single cell microorganism uh -huh. that is capable of converting sugar yes. into alcohol. Uh -huh. Alcohol and carbon dioxide. Got so it. this process is called fermentation. Yeah. And uh, this is basically, yeah, this is it. There's so many varieties of yeast. Mm -hmm. Uh, in general, there are two families, mm -hmm. ale yeast that ferments at higher temperature uh -huh. and lager yeast, okay. which ferments at lower temperature right. and um, that produces more neutral beers. Got it. So we'll have a chance to taste. Oh, great. We have a lager beer uh, in today's set and, yeah. and, and eels, right? Okay. So, but basically, there's so many, uh, so many, you know, um, 
different flavors. Yeah. So yeast is as characterful as hops, basically. And combining these two, yeah. you can get a really, really nice, intense flavors. Oh, nice. All right. Okay, so um, before we get to the beers, we've got a question from Terry on Facebook. Terry's asking, what happens to the flavor of the beer if we use more than three hops in a beer? Wow, you sound like you know your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you use more than three hop varieties and uh -huh. they're fresh, it gets better. I think it's... Oh, really? It, yeah, absolutely. So, um, what we do at Brewworks, we don't really limit ourselves mm -hmm. with creativity and yeah. most of these beers, they're not single hop variety, right? Ah. There's, a, there's always a blend. Right, so there's always a blend, Terry. If you want to add it, um, there's really no limits to the creativity. Um, but Mitch says it, will taste, it might taste better. So if you're a home brewer, why not give it a shot, right? Absolutely. Give it a try. Yeah. Uh, don't limit yourself. Yeah. Try new varieties, blend new varieties and old varieties. There's so many ways to skin a cat. And right. I bet the more you use, the, the more interesting the flavor is gonna be. Right. And then you go to Brewworks, go ahead and secretly find uh, Mitch to try your beer, see whether nice or not. <laughs> okay, so, cool. So actually, if you look at your can, mm -hmm. at the side here, you are able to see the hops that we use. Yeah. So different beers have different amount of hops. Wow, and okay. And number of hops, and the yeah. name of the hops too. Sure. Can I just also say the design on the cans are absolutely stunning. I mean, you guys went all the way. Each can is so different. They follow a theme. What's that whole like design process like? Or oh, why, why so visual? And I, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Let me start. So sure. uh, basically, we start with a, with a beer concept. Uh -huh. And that's, that's where we actually don't limit ourselves, right? right. Where we uh, brainstorm and uh, just come up with all the crazy ideas. Yeah. And then once the beer is close to be ready, you know, yeah. uh, there might be some changes during the process, mm -hmm. uh, but basically we foresee the result. Ah. And then afterwards, we try to describe it. Yeah. And that's when, when the designing team wow. uh, steps in. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we come up with the names, you know, yeah. as a brewing team, like we have a, a fantastic team and yeah. uh, very all round guys. And, uh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you, before you taste a beer, if a can is uh, like that, you sort of get greeted visually, have an idea of maybe a visual representation of what it could, it could that experience is going to be like. Super yeah, cool. So actually when Mitch tells the marketing team uh, the name, yeah. uh, rough name of the beer, yeah. how it tastes like, yeah. so we have to imagine, okay, mm, fruity, flowery, yeah. uh, refreshing. Yes. So we will design something based on what, what we read his description yes. from right. and then uh, we'll come back again to show him, okay, this is our design. Yeah. So sometimes we have one to two design, we're not sure, we will ask him, is it more on the powerful, impactful, like like this right. racing bomb? Yeah. Or something more floral and light, like what you're holding right, right now? Then he'll let us know and then we'll just design. That's great. It's a very yes. creative process, you know. Absolutely. Coming up with a recipe, yeah. then coming up with a label. So it's not always peaceful, right? It's. I can imagine <laughs> yeah. when, when you put many creative people at work together, right? But I mean, um, what we're looking at is really honestly quite, like it's really quite stunning and I feel like every one of the beers have such a unique identity so visually as a consumer I feel like I'm holding something very special you know like you feel like you, you were part of that process so that was really cool yeah all right so um, what shall we do next shall we are we going to crack open the beers yet uh, I think before yeah. we start mm -hmm. uh, let me give like, like a brief intro of yes, beer sure. styles yeah so Today we are tasting six, six different beers. Okay. Six different beers of different beer styles. Okay. And each style represents its own intention, you know, its own flavor, yep. idea, and so on. Mm -hmm. So before we start, um, currently in the world there are over a hundred beer styles recognized. Yeah. Right. And counting, like literally yeah. every year, there's there's a new fat beer style coming right. over. And uh, uh, so currently, like out of this hundred, yeah. there's let's say. Half of that is historical beer styles okay. that were basically, some of them were even revived. Yeah. Right? They were extinct for the past hundred oh, wow. years or so. Okay. Mm, so, and that is, uh, you know, the advantage of craft beer revolution that's, uh, you know. Yeah, bringing back, bringing the, back everything. Right? Yeah, that's great. So, uh, and there's new beer styles mm -hmm. and there's beer styles that actually hardly exist, yeah. right? Like one of these beers will be oh, like, I'm, I'm keeping, uh, wow. I'm giving you a, a sneak peek, but yeah, Okay, like. okay, we're ready for it. So um, can you sort of tell and uh, like uh, immediately when we pour out the beer, what kind of beer style is that? Well, 
By look, probably not. Yeah. But by taste, uh, and by, smell. by aroma, by yeah. smell. Yeah. So uh, I think we should we should talk a little bit like how we're gonna taste it. Oh, right? sure. So yeah. uh, this basic attributes of beer that we were looking for mm -hmm. and like the way we assess. Okay. So we always start with aroma yeah. after, after pouring. Okay. We start with aroma, we give it a gentle swirl uh -huh. and then we have uh, two, three short sniffs. Okay. Uh, that's how we assess it. We try right. to describe it. Yeah. That's where we can find uh, hoppy aromas, mm -hmm. which can be, which, which can present like a broad range of whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, fruity, tropical, mm. resiny, okay. herbal. Sure. Then you'll also smell malt aromas. Yeah. Uh, especially some of these beers, they will have a strong malt backbone, yeah. which would be uh, mm, biscuity, mm. tasty, uh, toasty, and so on. Yeah. Uh, then we'll look at the beer. Yeah. And assess color. Okay. That's where the visual aspect yes, comes, yes. right? Yeah. Color, clarity, and head. Mm. Head texture, head retention, and so on. Uh, then we sip. Okay. Um, and then uh, then we assess mouth fill. Okay. So um, basically aroma. Yes, I already described. Um, yeah. Uh, visual aspect, yes. Flavor, we always uh, assess malt flavors and hop flavors, right? And the balance of these two. Mm. Uh, like I said, it could be toasty, yeah. um, bready. You know, today we don't have uh, dark beers. All the beers are pretty light colored. Okay, sure. So uh, pretty neutrally, uh, neutrally malt. Some of these beers, they will have some, uh, some toasted um, overtones. Yeah. All right. So before we um, move on, we're going to say hello to Isaac on Facebook. He's saying hello to Mitch and Joanne as well. Isaac. Hi, Hi, Isaac. What's up? Thanks for hanging out with us. And uh, if you haven't already, stand by your beers. We're going to go uh, real quick. But I think Mitch just brought us through that process of um, going to, uh, you know, uh, getting the aroma and then the taste to really teach us to fully appreciate uh, the beer. Yeah. So we're also going to say hi to Sylvia on Facebook. She asks, what is the best beer for watching Korean dramas? Okay, uh, interesting question. Mitch, any idea about this? Mm, I've never watched any Korean drama, to be honest. I should try. Yeah, um, I would say... Should it be like an uh, uplifting beer? An uplifting beer, yeah. because sometimes mm. it gets very dramatic and sad, you know? So Otherwise, I would... I light beers, to lighten the mood of... To lighten the, the mood. Korean dramas. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Something it, fruity. You something know? fruity, yeah. I think so. To match the visual scenery I of, think I have, uh, I have, of Korea. I have an idea like this one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, that would that would probably go well. Okay, so he yeah. So Sylvia, thank you for your question. Um, you can go with a light beer to sort of contrast the heavy emotional tone of a <laughs> Korean drama. Yes, we believe that that will help your experience, yes. right? No, okay, no. keep the interesting questions coming guys. We are uh, here to answer them. So if you've got any questions from our experts here during this masterclass, feel free, shoot away. All right, let's get to it. All, All right. right, I'm thirsty. I am so thirsty, yes. Perfect timing, 5.48, Friday. Perfect. Here we so, go. All right guys, we get started with yeah. this one. Okay. Uh, Joanne, okay. I want to say how it's... Okay, so... Mitch, I have a question for you. Uh, okay. Why is this beer this name? It yeah. sounds like what well, the hell is. What the hell is, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, is it an expression you get after you drink? Or is it a... Well, it's, it's basically a pun, you know. Uh, so this beer uh -huh. uh, originates in Germany. Mm. It's a light lager beer and in German, um, Helles means bright or pale. Oh. So, as opposed to Pilsner beers, which are designed to be more bitter, Helles beers, they are very drinkable. We will have to use this word, crushable, you know. Mm. Um, enjoyable drinking beer, easy drinking. Uh, the alcohol content is pretty uh, moderate, not so pronounced bitterness, yeah. balanced with a uh, nice malty backbone. So, mm. this is it, what the hell is. Munich style lager. Wow, okay. Hell, what the hell is, ladies and gentlemen? Um, and it's a Munich style lager. Let's give it a shot. Oh, can you hear the sound of salvation when you crack open <laughs> the sound of that beer? Wonderful. All right, so we sort of tilt a little bit. I'll pull through. And. Sorry, I don't know. Right, guys, so that's the way How we far pour. are we going? A yeah. little bit 
under angle, and then we give it a full blast. Okay, to and get, then yes, a full blast. Full blast. So, ladies and gents, you tilt it at the start, and then go for it. At go for it. You need, you need head, right? Yeah. You want to see a, like this. Frog, like this. Yeah. Okay, aroma. Give it a couple swirls. Okay, give it a couple swirls. I never thought that you need to swirl your beer. Uh, you like, know, people like always wine? associate that with wine, yeah. right? Oh. And give it a couple sniffs. So you'll, you might smell a little bit of hay, herbal notes, mm. Mm, freshly cut grass. Yeah, yeah, I smell the grass. Yeah. So this is the perfect summer beer in, uh, in Europe, right? Yeah, so it's, it's... even the smell alone brings you to another place, you know. Exactly. Interesting, okay. Okay, now let's try. Oh, I've already tried it. Mm. Mm. What do you ah, think? This is very light. Very light. Um, it, it, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is that it's not too bitter. It's very um, approachable. Approachable, and I imagine like if you're having a meal, this is very versatile because you could pair it quite easily, right? Or Korean drama. Or Korean drama, <laughs> Sylvia. Please listen up. This one's for you. This is a bit on the lighter side, so yeah. I think the first mouse feels like. It's a hot summer day, yeah. and you're on the beach, and the wave just... <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> a very well, refreshing... Can be food show host this one. Very good, the description. A very refreshing feel. Definitely. I think we guys should try to pair it. Mm. Approachable is the word, yeah. Mm. Never thought I'd describe a beer as approachable, but I totally feel you on that, yeah. Approachable, but not watery. That's important. Mm, okay. So I'll do the honour to... Okay, so we're going to pair some snacks. Uh, and before that, we've got a question from Faye on Facebook. Faye asks, is it a must to rinse your palate between tastings? What do you guys think? Hmm. You know, one of the aspects of, of a good pairing mm -hmm. is uh, palate cleansing uh, ability of beer. Yeah. So, um, I, would, I would recommend have another sip. Have another sip. Have another sip. <laughs> so yeah, um, Faye, I think to answer your question, um, Mitch recommends having another sip. It does sort of cleanse itself, Absolutely. right? You, you, it doesn't, most of the beers don't leave a very heavy lingering taste. Okay. So I think it's safe to say you could just go for it. All right, we've got a wide plethora of snacks here. This is, wow, this reminds me of my childhood. I'm revealing my age, right? Yeah, I know. But I, I, I am... Uh, this looks really, really wonderful, colourful. From all the different eth ethnic groups. Cool. So guys, I want to keep it surprising for everybody, for everybody who's testing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just recommend to have this yeah. every beer with every snack. Every beer with every that's, snack. That's how we actually do it. Oh, wow. We have our, our own favorite things, you know, and, yeah. and pairings. And there, of course, there are rules how you pair certain beers with, cer with certain foods. Yeah. But I, I do like this uh, surprising factor, you know. Okay, it's, yeah. Sometimes you, you, you never know what makes a good pairing, right? right? Okay, so which one so are we going to start? Yeah, ask, which one should we start first? Uh, Savory or sweet? Papadom. Papa I think Dom? it's, uh, Papa it's the most neutral one. Okay. Mm. Wow. I think mm. it enhances the I was beer. Just, yeah. I w Flavor. It does. The the saltiness from that papadum really brings out the 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 notes from the beer. Right. That's very interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Nicely bready. All right. Yeah, like a bread crust. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Should we try another snack with that? Sure. What are you all going well, for? Yeah, what you... mm. This one? What's yeah. this one called again? Ah? Rampenyet. Rampenyet. Wow, I love my drop today, ladies and gents. It's a good mm. day at work. Oh man. And a good day at home for you watching. I like this one. I think this is a level of intensity compared to Papadum. Definitely. Right. This, um, as mentioned, I think it's a very 
like what makes it approachable beer, very versatile, I think can go with a wide range of snacks. We have to move on to the next beer. So um, Mitch, maybe you want to share with us what we're going to move on to. So we're mm. moving to Bicentennial Ale. Okay. Do we really want to introduce this one? It's a very, very special beer. Wow, this one's very patriotic, eh? ladies and gents, <laughs> right? My national pride has erupted <laughs> when I look at this beer can. Yeah, so this was actually brewed last year mm -hmm. in celebration of 200 years of Singapore. Ah. Uh, so we, we believe that in every journey, there's ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And this beer, actually, if you read uh, on the back of the beer, actually this was... Um, all proceeds of this went to a charity. Oh, wow. So we wanted to help somebody along the way. That's great. So every single beer that, that sold 100% went to charity and, mm -hmm. and... Yeah. Great. Let's try it then. So... Um, I'll let you do that. Alright. So maybe Mitch, you want to tell us about this uh, special brew or what went into it? I'm just going to pour a little bit yeah, ladies and gents because I'm <laughs> getting a bit carried away. <laughs> getting very excited. Alright. So this beer is, uh, is a classic English style ale. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicely. It's a tad darker than uh, than the first one. Mm -hmm. So it has a little bit golden hue to it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, very clear. And um, oh, this one has um, I don't know if I'm smelling it right, but there's a particular fruit. Is it? Is that right? Or fruit? Mm. No. No. No, I think. Oh, there's no fruit in this beer, right? Okay. So, um, all the aroma is derived from from, uh, from the yeast, from yeast the and hops. Yeah. So we use uh, English L yeast, mm. very characterful one, very classic characterful yeast, and it, it, it contributes to this nicely perfumey Ooh. but not overpowering notes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel something at the back of the flavor. When I taste, there is this. There's something that comes on the back. Mm. I know what you. I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, and and this one I feel is um, a little uh, heavier in that sense in terms of the tone and the flavor yeah. compared to the first one. That's where we come to the concept of mouthfeel. Right. Yeah. So it, it has fuller body. Fuller body. Fuller body. That's the right, right. technical term. Yes. Fuller right. body. Um, and in in a way, this is something that I would um, prefer over something that's lighter. Yeah. I, I like things with a bit more a stronger flavor. Yeah. yeah. So this is. This is really nice. Would you say this is a golden ale or a blonde? Yeah. Right. Golden, uh, English golden ale. English golden right. ale. Gotcha. All right. Bicentennial edition. Very, very cool. I think you all did Singapore Pro on this one, really. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, I feel still very approachable if mm. you're talking about food pairings and having a, right. having a beer. Yeah. And it's not extreme. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So. So let's give it a shot with our snacks here today. Um, should we go for for the prawn, prawn, roll. prawn roll. Prawn roll. Could work. And while we are eating, we've got a question from Delicia. Ooh, Delicia, your name is <laughs> delicious. It is, you are meant to enjoy food in life. And she asked, what are the key principles of beer and snack pairing? Good question also. Thanks for the question. Um, either it's snack or food pairing. It doesn't really matter. The principles are the same. There are three ways. Or well, three aspects you should take into account. Aspect number one is palate cleansing, the palate one cleansing. We, we already mentioned. Right. So the beer should be able to cleanse your palate in between mm. the meals, right? Yeah. Second aspect is contrasting. Contrasting. So you, contrasting. Right. You can pair a beer that is very different from uh, from food, right? right. So in once um, you'll have like a synergistic effect. Yeah. When when they actually uh, by contrast, yeah. they will emphasize the flavors of, of each of other. Each other, right? right. Mm. And the third way is uh, comprising. Okay. Right. So you basically match flavors, uh -huh. or maybe even uh, some beers that uh, use spices, for example. Yeah. And you pair it with dish that uses the same spices. Mm, okay. So we have got a um, what's the first one again? Sorry. Uh, uh, palate cleansing, and then you've got your contrast, and then a matching as well. So these are the principles that you can... Uh, guys, when I drink too much, I tell you, right? Like, poof! I'm just happy and I'm like, haha. So, yes, uh, thank you Mitch for sharing. Those are the principles of beer pairing. 
All right, we're gonna go on to our next beer today. Um, and that would be... That would be the most exciting beer. Most exciting beer. Okay, let's check it out. This is so cool. It looks like a retro arcade game cover. <laughs> like, you know, the, the, the aeroplane come out from the bottom of the screen and then you shoot. Like, this looks awesome. After bunker. After burner. After burner, After sorry burner. about that. Yes. See what happens when I drink beer, ladies and gents? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this uh, is a very special one. Yeah. Uh, we brewed in collaboration with uh, um, aviation industry professionals. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow, really? Yeah. So we, we held a blind tasting. Uh -huh. And this beer was designed for Singapore Air Show 2020. No way. Right. Wow. You can have a beer for every everything. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by style, it's a Pacific Pale Ale. Okay. Uh, we use quite a bit of uh, Australian hops in this one. Mm -hmm. And okay, let's let's try. All right. It's, oh, there we describing go. Describing beers is like dancing architecture. Right. Yeah, I hear you. So the people in the aviation industry helped to create this beer. Absolutely. That's amazing. And what was the process like? So uh, we held a blind tasting. Blind tasting. And, uh, we had, we had uh, our own. Eight beers. Eight beers. Uh -huh. No, no labor. So imagine eight glasses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, name, let's say name one to eight. You, yeah. you taste them. You write on a piece of paper what you like, what you don't like. Oh wow. Yeah. Most importantly, why? Why you think why? so? Okay. Why? Okay. So? Wow. Well, thank you everybody in the aviation industry for creating this beer. Oh, this one definitely has a fruit, right? A bit of a fruity note. No fruits. No fruits? No fruits. Guys, <laughs> sorry. Everything is haywire when I drink. So this beer, all the flavors and aromas are uh, derived from hops. Okay. So you can taste honey, honeydew melon, a little bit of pine, grapefruit. Wait, wait, wait. You say no fruits, then you say honeydew. Uh, honeydew. Oh, like I describe this, you know, as oh, this, but It's just the aroma. It's just the aroma. Mm. No fruits, guys. No okay, fruits. Okay, no fruits. There's no fruits in the brewing process. No. But in terms of aroma, the smell. Yeah. So this is from the hops. Yeah, absolutely. Was... So uh, we utilize a very interesting process mm -hmm. that is called dry hopping. Okay. So if you if you read all the classic brewing books, you know they will tell you like hops are added during boiling. Yeah. So that's where you derive the bitterness. Yeah. And then if you add at the end of the boil the flame out, yeah. you will it will extract some aroma and so on. Mm. But you can, if you go against the grain, you can add hops after the fermentation. So oh, okay. after the alcohol is already produced uh -huh. by the yeast, uh, so you can add hops. Right. And that when you extract the aroma compounds of it. Ah. So hops is a very very interesting plant. Yeah. Um, there's around 400 different uh, aromatic compounds mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. That's why it's uh, it's quite unpredictable when you when when you blend the hops. Yeah. Uh, you can't really know what's going to happen, right? right? It's, right. Uh, it's so it's a lot of just trial and uh, error, trial testing, and error. crafting it to be the right. the perf like what you want. Yeah, we've got a question from Justin on Webex. He asks which beer pairs well with porridge. Hmm, porridge. What is, porridge? Is it yeah. frog porridge? I would imagine like Fish you're talking porridge. about soup, right? You know, maybe a, a thicker porridge mm. rather Hong than Hong your Hong yeah, Hong. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like that, rather Hongi? than no, yeah. no spice. No, just uh, no if spice. you ask me what, what pairs well with frog porridge, I would tell. Okay, frog porridge. That's my Let's favorite. Go for it. That's no my problem. favorite. Let's assume it's frog porridge. So you see, uh, Mitch confirmed like frog <laughs> porridge. That's why he already know which beer pairs well with that. So them. usually, uh, I go to a couple places with frog porridge, and um, I go there because the sauce is so savory, yeah. and they use a lot of ginger and garlic, uh -huh. right? So for the spicy one, I would recommend double IPA. Double IPA. Yeah. Because it's so spicy and the yeah. sauce is very dark, right? Absolutely. Gotcha. Okay, mm. so Justin, if you are having a frog porridge, double IPA. Okay, so back to this uh, Pacific Pale Ale. Um, this is something that I naturally gravitate towards because mm. this is, um, it has all the lovely bitter notes along with that floral aroma. Oh, this is, this is really, really good. Yeah. Something more up my alley than the lighter beers. Yeah. Mm. What snack do you guys want to try? How about Maruku? Yeah, I was about to say Maruku. Maruku, let's do it. 
And while we're eating the moruku, we've got a question from Fang Xin on Facebook. She says, does the shape of the glass matter? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Myth debunked. I totally recommend this sort of glass, <laughs> especially with this logo. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's the best one for this beer. But absolutely, mm, usually for beer tasting, mm. there's a, you know, every beer style favors certain beer glass. I see. So um, the stronger, the more aromatic beers, yeah. they, uh, they, mm, they favor more like tulip style. Okay. Something like this, so uh, it's more narrow towards the the, the top, so it uh, will um, con uh, condense and concentrate the aroma. Mm -hmm. If we are talking about light beers, like what the hell is, for example, yeah. a pine glass, yeah, uh, that will yeah, or a, a, like a, a, in Europe it's called Weinbecher. It's it's just a plain straight glass because gotcha. you're not expecting to to catch so many aromas in that beer, and right. you're expecting like refreshing that mm. refreshing feeling that we've had yeah. as we try it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the shape of the glass actually does matter. So if you are having something a bit uh, more aromatic, we would recommend something like this as well. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm. I, I want to say that the Moroku changed the flavor of. Absolutely. Wow, 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 wow. Really, really. Uh, wait, I try again. Uh, I'm busy talking. Let me try again. Please explain why. I just need to taste again one more time. Mm. Hmm. I agree. I totally agree. It, I think the spices from the Morocco. Hmm, what kind of spices is that? I think it's cumin. It, it tastes sweeter, actually. I hear you. So mm -hmm. it actually uh, brings out the more floral notes mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's because of the spices. Right. Yeah. Do you think Possible? so? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, but it's, it, you all see, right, it's. Right. Uh, there was a great question, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the basic principles of pairing. Guys, there's one rule. No rules. There's right? one rule. Try everything with everything <laughs> and no find your favorite pairings. Yeah, yeah. Because I think, you know, you, you sort of never know... Well, you can't listen to somebody else. You just need to find what works for you and what you like in terms of the flavor profile, the pairing and, and all that. So that's great advice. No rules. That's why, you see, we're in such a great position mm -hmm. when uh, Brewworks partly is a brewery, partly <laughs> is a media <laughs> <laughs> you, no worries. Uh, so, part of Brewworks uh -huh. is uh, is gastronomical experience, yeah. and we as brewers, we are so lucky to yeah. be able to to pair our beers mm -hmm. with, uh, with with those dishes. And gotcha. uh, at times, once we once there's a new dish, and we we basically taste a new dish with every beer, mm. because we we need to come up yeah. with uh, with a recommendation for our for our customers, right? And then sometimes it's just mind blowing, absolutely. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so we are going to move on to the next beer. Um, oh, but before that, we've got a question from Terry once more. He's asking, why is it called a Pacific Pale Ale? Because the hops that we use come from Australia. Uh -huh. And it's just a personal preference, right? Uh, generally, we haven't touched that subject, but there are certain regions in the world that hops uh, com coming from, mm -hmm. right? So there's uh, Pacific Northwest in the US, right. there's uh, Central Europe, mm -hmm. Germany mostly, yeah. uh, Czech Republic. Um, in Asia, that's Australia and New Zealand. Mm. So uh, in Pacific region, Australia right. and New Zealand. So Got it. it's, uh, it's, it's just yeah, it's Pacific Pale Ale due to the region. All right, we're going to move on to our next beer. Let me just... Our next one. Try and look handsome for y'all. Yeah. Okay. The next one is Circuit Breaker. Oh, this beer is called Circuit Breaker, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am uh, guessing that you guys developed this when you were in quarantine. Is that right? Yes. Um, and yeah. no, yes? Yes and no. Yes. Well, you know, um, it's uh, it's an honor to be to be working at Brewworks and have a pleasure to you know have a full R&D program. So basically we have uh, a schedule for, for the upcoming year, mm -hmm. right? So oh. one of the beers oh. uh, was to be released right. before the circuit breaker, oh. but since the things went a bit complicated, so right. we, we had to defer it a little bit. Okay, and that's the name. 
when you released it at that point of time called Circuit Breaker? I think we were yeah, so we had some fun with the design. Yeah, uh, I see it. As you can it. see. Uh, so what comes to your mind during Circuit Breaker? Definitely staying at home and only going out to buy groceries. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what about the craze of toilet papers? Yes, <laughs> toilet papers. <laughs> okay, and you see closely, you see this red and white stripes tape. Yeah. That is basically plastered everywhere. Right. Playgrounds, exactly. uh, um, pavilions, yeah. you know, anywhere that you can sit and hang out there, everywhere is just plastered with this red and white case. Mm. So we had some fun with this design. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted a design that, that um, Singaporeans could relate to. Mm. Because I mean, first of all, Circuit Breaker is unique to Singapore. Definitely. You yeah. know, before, before Circuit Breaker happened in Singapore, Circuit Breaker was just a piece of Electrical, yeah, appliance. electrical appliance. Yes, yes. correct. Yeah. So this actually be to commemorate uh, circuit breaker mm -hmm. because we're all stuck at home, <laughs> correct? So yeah, I my mom and I actually grew a bit closer because I like she would cook all the time. Yes, and then yes. I'm like, wow, this like I really started to appreciate her cooking a lot more. Mm. Yeah, and then I started to order a lot of um, craft beers online as well. So that was a chance to sort of just like chill out, explore. Yeah. Yeah. So this beer just to. When you drink this beer, because it's very refreshing, very easy to drink, it helps okay. to gives you this memory flashback of the last three months, I yeah, would say. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. It was a relaxing time for me. <laughs> I kind of miss it now, you know, with all the busyness. <laughs> okay, come. So uh, let's have. I think this beer perfectly emphasizes our aspirations to brew approachable beers with a local twist. Uh, you know, whenever like I, yeah. I talk to my friends abroad and nobody knows what circuit breaker is, right? Right, it's right. Like, Are you talking about that thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That was the, you know. Yeah. The so lockdown. Definitely the, the, the label is a conversation starter for yes, sure. For yeah. Sure. Yes. So uh Ooh. by style this beer is called New England IPA. Mm -hmm. Or actually this one, yeah, New England IPA. Uh it's quite a new and, and fat beer style. Yeah, you see the colour. Oh yeah, it's... it's it looks yes. juicier by... It does, it's a bit cloudier as well, right? Well, actually, this beer is supposed to be cloudy. Mm. But it wasn't the intention, but because we use a lot of uh, oats. Oh, oats. Oh, oats. Okay. oats, oatmeal, it will contribute to this round mouthfeel. Yeah, yeah. But inadvertently it would promote haze. Mm. And also this beer, remember when we discussed dry hopping, yeah. uh, we use tremendous amounts of hops. So guys, no fruits in this beer. Yeah. You could tell it's, it's, it's utterly fruity, right? Yeah. Tropical and so on. Yeah. There's a very toasty smell to it. Toasty? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's not toasty. Or is it too much beer? <laughs> yeah, so this is interesting because um, like when you talk about mouthfeel, it definitely sort of coats your mouth a lot more than right. the previous ones. And, but at the same time, the flavours aren't too overpowering. Yeah. It's very easy beer. Right? Yeah, absolutely. But definitely hoppier than... Yeah, hoppier. Hop so, hop when, as brewers, when we say hoppy, it's a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, Wrong slippery, slippery slope. Okay. No, 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 because like, hoppiness can mean bitter, hoppiness can mean right. tropical, Tro fruity, tropical fruity, fruit. but not bitter. Right. Right, so it's basically all the flavours derived from hops. Yeah. So, this is... Very hoppy beer, yeah, but not bitter. Mm -hmm. Easy to drink, yeah, yeah, very easy to drink. I love that consistency as well on the on the mouthfeel. It does sort of leave a deep, like a deeper impression as opposed to just like using the beer to wash down your food. You know that kind of feeling. This right. one you really sort of savor it a lot more. Yeah, I feel that like it coats better also mm. than the previous beers. Mm. Yeah, circuit breaker. Well done. Something wonderful came out of this of this period. Oh, uh, we've got a question from Nas from Facebook. What is the most surprising successful pairing you've encountered? Very good question. Wow. Successful, uh, uh, keyword, you know. <laughs> okay. I will go first. So I love spicy food. Mm -hmm. um, I think during circuit breaker, I bought this uh, mala Ooh, yes. new skin. Yeah. So I, I had one or two beers at home. I yeah. opened to try. I, I realized that spicy beers uh, go better with a hoppier, heavier flavoured mm. beers. Ah, so spicy food? Yes. With hoppier, more heavy flavoured beers? Yes, right. oh, yes. Okay. Well, sure. yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a general recommendation basically, yeah. Yeah, so her recommendation is right. So um, Naz, if you're a fan of spicy food, I think that's a good, uh, a good pairing option. Mitch, do you have any sort of successful or unexpected yeah, actually, ones? Yeah, actually I was... Uh, 
my mind was was blown away. Um, Tom Yam fish skin. Tom Yam fish skin. That's it's just. I'm speechless. You know what uh, Mitch was eating during circuit breaker, ladies and gents? <laughs> Very specific. Uh, Tom Yam fish skin. And what, what pairing would go well with that? Uh, to be honest, with any beer. With any beer. With any beer. Yeah, because I imagine the. Uh, it's good without. It's good without beer. It's amazing with any beer. Amazing with any beer. <laughs> yeah, because uh, on its own, like Tom Yam is so um, like fragrant, aromatic, and then you have that sweet sour note with the uh, saltiness of the fish skin, right? Plus a bit of spice. Plus a bit of spice. And the and texture of, of skin itself. Yeah. It's yeah. phenomenal. Wow, okay, I'm gonna go and after this straight away buy some Tom Yum fish skin specifically and get get some of the Brewworks beer and wash it. Like, like just marry the two together. Yes, great. All right, we're going to move on to our next beer. What, uh, what beer are we at, ladies and gents? This wanna, fifth, fifth one, is it? Shall we try one we try snack? Some just one snack. One snack, sure. Some, some pineapple. Yeah, okay. Mm. Okay, so generally I'm a bit skeptical about having sweet stuff with beer because I'm always afraid that it would diminish any like sweetness is very sensitive, mm -hmm. that it would diminish any of the important notes. What's your take on that? I think it makes the, the snack taste more sour. Oh okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. Because mm. both are very fruity. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They match well. And then the crispness of, uh, of the cake itself. Yeah, yeah. It pairs nicely. And jam, in the, since it's in the center, right? If yeah, you guys I can like see the jam. It. The jam, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the, the jam for me brings out the aroma more when I have the beer. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's very interesting. So actually, when you're very mindful when you eat and drink, right, you can start to detect all the the subtle nuances of the food and the, the, the drink yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Excellent. So we're going to move on to our one, two, three, four. We are at our fifth beer, ladies and gents. Hatch. <laughs> trouble counting, ladies and gentlemen, and because it's my fifth one. This is the special one. This beer is, um, let me guess, made for Singapore Food Festival? Yes. 2020? Yes. So, um, ladies and gents, it's called Passion Gao Siu Tai, which means thick, intense passion, but less sweet. Because nowadays, we are getting old. Okay, maybe not you watching at home. I'm getting old. You prefer things less sweet, you know what I mean? Whenever I get my coffee nowadays, it's always Siu Tai or Kosong. So, um, can you tell us what inspired this, this brew? Wow, that's quite an interesting one. Um... That was the tail end of the, of the circuit breaker when we uh, started having these ideas okay. about something very special. Yeah. Um, this was this beer is an amalgamation of uh, multiple different styles. This mm. we call it a fruited hazy IPA. Yeah. A style which is not formally recognized, so it's a, it's a fusion style. Right? Interesting. It's yeah, hazy IPA. It's my first time coming fruited across that. Hazy, hazy IPA is there. They are well known. Oh, right? okay. Fruited hazy fruited IPA. Fruited hazy right. IPA, and it has very nice start note. And so many people, mm -hmm. like, for example, like brewer, my brewer friends, yeah. they would always think this is a sour beer, but it's tart, but that was not the intention, right? Uh, it, it has nice, refreshing tartness to yeah. it, but more to it, it, it's, it has overpowering fruitiness. Mm. So I noticed on the label as well, we've got an homage to the hawkers who are making our kopi and te. Grumpy old man. Kop <laughs> yeah, our kopi old man, and, and that really links up with the name as well, right? Passion Gao Siu Tai. So that's that's really, really awesome. Yeah. So basically, we wanted to feature the hawkers mm -hmm. because at Singapore Food Festival, we want to pay tribute to everybody who contributed to a culinary nation. Yeah. From the hawkers to the restaurants right. to the last time was push cart back, back then. Yeah. So basically, that's why we featured them in the front of our cans. Yeah. So when, when you drink this beer, remember the hawkers, the, the uncles, the aunties who, yeah. who really go through the sweat. To, to, to prepare really awesome food for us. Absolutely. So we need to like give like a crate of these to some of the hawkers who love their beers as well, yeah? This is great. I look, I, I'm looking at uh, the label as well. There is two giant passion fruits at the side. So I'm imagining there's going to be notes of that, yeah? Absolutely. So uh, we like the motto. Mm -hmm. Passion made possible. Ah, passion right? made possible. So I guys. see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> This is a beer with passion fruit. Great. With loads and heaps of passion fruit. Mm -hmm. So don't be shocked. Right. At the Let's try it. 
Let's try it. <clears throat> okay. We have, um, before we get to the flavors and the profiles, Isaac, Glenn and Shermaine, as well as Ed on Facebook are asking the uh, very... Wait, let's see. What beer would you recommend with curry chicken, ha chong kai, durian, mango? Are you Can we start with the last one? Huh? Can we start with the last one? Okay, mango? we'll start with the last one. We're gonna go with what beer would you recommend with mango? This one. This one. This one. Best beer, absolutely. Durian. That's interesting. Wow, I never thought beer and mango could, could go. Yeah. Okay, guys, have you ever heard the myth? Uh, I don't know if just my mother being an auntie, okay, but the myth that when you drink durian and eat drink beer, you will die. Mm, no. No. Or you will faint. No. Really? Huh? Debunked. No, it's debunked. Debunked. Yes. You guys have tried the it? The other night. You tried it? <laughs> yes. And Mitch is still here, ladies and gents. <laughs> so I'm going to let my mother, mum, if you're watching, we'll be fine. Yes. Right, so so you tried it and it was all good, yeah? But interesting, Perfect. they asked what beer would you pair with durian, something like durian, which is so mm. heavy, sweet. I don't even know how to describe I've durian. Never tried. Neither. You know, like uh, durian itself is, is quite oily. Yeah. So I assume the beer should uh, should balance this. Yeah. And has very have very very strong palate cleansing properties. So I assume it should be something sour. Something sour. Something sour. Ooh. Yeah, I can see. I can see like how that. Like passion would again. Like passion like again, passion. or um, yeah, I don't think like you can. Yeah. Wow. So well, one of the brew works beers uh, we had deep purple. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be a very interesting pairing. So okay. With, uh, sour beer with blackberries. Sour beer with blackberries. Wow, that's a very specific answer. Um, for chicken curry and ha chong kai, what do you think? They are both quite um, salty. I imagine very rich foods. Uh, I've tried curry chicken mm. with um, pilsner. Okay. It's, it's not here. Sure. Uh, I, I like how it goes because curry chicken is very coconutty, yes. heavy. Uh, I'm, I'm referring to the thick curry chicken, not mm -hmm. the watery one. So it, it's, it's very flavorful yeah. and very heavy on its own and a little spicy. I realize that pilsner kind of gives a, uh, a refreshing yeah. Uh, feel to how, how we tried just now. Yeah, um, what the, the contrast. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So it gives very refreshing feel to curry chicken. Gotcha. I have not tried hachong kai though. Mm. Hachong kai, yeah. imagine very umami and very um, a bit salty. Maybe yeah. it's, yeah, so mm -hmm. something that would be a bit, I don't know, light, I, I imagine. Yeah. What do you think, Mitch? Umami. Yeah, something salty. It's a basically it's a marinated in a shrimp oh, paste. Okay. Deep, deep fried chicken. Yeah. Deep fried beans. chicken. Uh, is it seared? Roasted? Deep, deep fried. It's deep, deep fried, fried. Yeah. Deep fried. It's a prawn paste. I would go with something like an amber lager. Actually. Amber lager. Yeah. Okay. That would sure. be a very interesting pairing because yeah. uh, they will match, you know, this yep. uh, toasted notes uh, in chicken and yes. toasted notes in beer. Ah. They will match perfectly. Wow. Toasted notes on the deep fried chicken as well as the toasted notes in an amber lager. Awesome. This, uh, back to the passion cow beer, it immediately when you have it, it's almost like a sour beer. Like I hear you on that tartness. I love that because for me, um, I prefer my dessert a bit more sour and refreshing more than um, something very indulgent or decadent. So this would absolutely lift off from like a heavy meal. Yeah. Shall Ooh, we? a fruit bomb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you are drinking this at home, ladies and gents, let us know what you think because this is truly quite special. You get sort of, I mean, the primary note for me, of course, is a bit um, tangy, but then it gets uh, into the, the finish, sort of gives you that, um, I don't know how would you say, round or a bit more settled flavor in your mouth. Yeah, that's interesting. Let's try... Yeah, let's try it. Shall we try breadstick? Oh. Breadsticks. Try with breadstick. I uh, will so, go with papadums. Is that bahu? Is that bahu on the... Yes, it's uh, wrote on bahu, correct. Oh, cool. So it gives a bit of saltiness mm. to the toasted breadstick. Meat floss, in case you don't know what bahu is, <laughs> but yeah. What, do, do, do people like order and reorder this this breadstick? 
at um, Grow Works when they're dining in. Ooh. This is made specially for this tasting. Oh, it's made specially for here. Wow. Wow, that's interesting. Like we always use a, a descriptor. Yeah. Juicy. Juicy. Yeah. Absolutely. So this perfectly fits yeah. to this beer. It is juicy. It's round. It's like um, citrusy. Ooh, that's good. It's very aromatic as well. And the breadstick, the saltiness as well, really sort of lifts, like contrasts how sour this is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. I like the I like the bahu with the beer. Yeah. Yeah. It, it tastes a bit more bahu. It tastes <laughs> more, more bahu. like bring out the essence <laughs> more of the pork floss, right? Yeah. I hear you. All right, we are going to move along to our final beer for today. And what are we going to be having? We're going to be having Resin Bomb. Resin Bomb. Ooh. Looks like it's a, a double IPA. Double IPA. Double IPA, so double the hoppiness, double the bitterness, wow. double the alcohol. So in terms of flavour, this would be the heaviest today. Right. Gotcha. All right, Resin Bomb. Let's, let's do it, yeah. Guys, I'm five beers in, having the time of my life. I'm so sad that this is coming to an end. <laughs> Alright, so immediately already, the colour on that is... The darkest of all. The darkest of all, indeed. Yeah. Wow. You can already smell... The bomb. The bomb. Ooh, okay. Let's give it a shot. If you might. I would describe it as a strong pineapple mm -hmm. with citrus, a little bit of uh, grapefruit peel. Yeah. Ooh. Wow, this is Ladies really and gentlemen, we're, like it's the most bitter beer of, of the night. It right? is. So it is. Be it warned. is well. This is absolutely um, like a flavor bomb. You really get that intense bitterness. Um, you get Hold on, hold on. Yeah, wow. This is easily like the like what you said, the bit the most bitter one. Mm. I'm curious to see how it will pair with the snack that we've got here. So I'm gonna take a bite of the sweet one, uh, the sweet snack, simply because this is really quite bitter. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Mm. <laughs> okay. I think in terms of contrast, it makes a bit of sense to me because... Mm. What do you think? <laughs> it's too intense for me. Intense? Because the bitterness suddenly escalates, right, with the yeah. sweetness. And then the sweet becomes really sweet as well, yeah. I'm going to try the prawn roll. Try the it with spice, the prawn roll? The spicy one. Spicy. So maybe the bitterness will help, uh, like, sort of dull out the spiciness a bit, yeah? Mmm. Also, we've got another question from Siwen on Facebook. She asked, what is the worst pairing you've come across? Wow. Well, we've got best pairing and worst pairing. I... Mm, Nutella and Cheetos. Horrible. Yeah, <laughs> don't try it. But in terms of beer... <laughs> it's when you pair good beer with bad beer. That's the worst pairing. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that, guys. When you pair good beer with bad beer, and can I just say, after I've tried craft beer, it's very hard for me to, to go, back. go back. To go back. It's yeah. very hard for me to go back. And I, I don't want to come across as that beer snob with my friends, so sometimes I just need to pretend, you know? But uh, my, my, my choice now, definitely craft beer. Cool. Yeah, so this one, very interesting. Again, heavy on the bitterness, but I can imagine that um, as my palate develops, maybe when I'm like older down the road, I would definitely, this would be my go-to. You know what I mean? There's I like, also, the, I like the pairing with the prawn roll. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, the prawn roll is less spicy. Uh -huh. And the, bitter, the bitterness is less... Like, it's toned down toned a bit? Down, yeah. yeah, I hear you. Oh, yeah. So Raisin like. bomb, double IPA. So double of all of that. The, even the alcohol volume is, is, uh, is more than the, like what we've had 7. earlier. 7.5%? Yeah, yep. that's the strongest beer of the night. Gotcha. Very, very cool. Thank you, guys. Well, um, we're going to take one last question before we run off. Um, we've got Justin from Webex who's asking, what is the most out-of-the-world ingredient you have encountered in brewing craft beer, whether at Brewworks or otherwise? 
It's for you, Mitch. Well, I've used a couple. Yeah. Once, um, so I was living in China before. Okay. Uh, for some time. And we've used soy sauce to make beer salty. What? Yes. Soy yeah. sauce beer? That's soy sauce beer. Interesting. How did it turn out? Uh, it turned out pretty interesting. I mean, uh, the intention was to get salty sour beer. Yeah. Uh, such a beer style exists. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we decided instead of table salt, yeah. why don't we use some local ingredient? Right. right? So it was a collaboration with, uh, with a brewery from Vietnam. And yeah. All right, we just went to a local market and uh, starting looking around and uh, ended soy up sauce. with that soy sauce. It gave a very interesting uh, brownish hue to beer, yeah, yeah. which wasn't like necessarily uh, appetizing, right, I would say. Right, right. Became a pale ale immediately, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, was it salty? Yeah, yeah. So we, we uh, you know, all the brewers were a little bit scientists, right? Right. So it's 95% or like 50% science, 50% art. Yeah. And so we did our calculation, we did our math. Yeah. So on an, every package, you can uh, uh, get the amount of salt, ah. right? So we calculated it, yeah. the right amount of salt that we needed, yeah. added into fermenting beer, and right. that was it. Wow, okay, so one of the most interesting ingredients, soy sauce, uh, ladies and gents. Well, um, thank you. I, I, before we go, I just have to say thank you so much to Mitch and Joanne for coming on today to share your expertise. I think I have, um, aside from being very happily, um, happily uh, filled up with beer, uh, I've learned a lot about the pairings as well. I've learned a lot about what goes into the process of developing a brew and it really makes me, the next time, you know, when I sit down and drink, have a drink with my friends, I'm going to take a moment to appreciate that beer in my mouth, you know, because I think a lot of hard work has been put into the brewing uh, of all the beers. So, um, hey, if you are at home watching, you want to take a photo, share with us your experience uh, from this live masterclass. You can tag us on Instagram with the hashtag Singapore Food Festival, all right? So tag us once again at the hashtag uh, Singapore Food Festival. We look forward to checking out uh, some of your posts as well. Also, we've got an upcoming session later. I'm going to be hosting it as well, 9.30 p.m. We are going to be, have, we are going to be having supper with Holy Crab. And uh, just a spoiler alert, I've tried some of the food Amazing. Can't wait to see you at 9.30. Thank you, Mitch and Joanne, for schooling us and um, having all this wonderful beer. We're going to have one last cheers before we wrap this up. Thank you, guys. Woohoo! Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. All right, cheers! Cheers! cheers. Passion for me. So was the beer of the night? Passion.